Hey, I have an idea. How about we try and do one in focus this time? All right. What's happening, Booth Junkies? Here we go. I'm going to talk today about equalization. Now, luckily, as voice artists, we don't have a ton to do equalization-wise, but there are a couple of tricks that you can do to try and make your uh, recordings sound a little cleaner, a little uh, crisper, a little nicer, and you can eliminate some trouble spots that typically happen in recordings with an equalizer. What's an equalizer? I don't know where the name comes from, but I think it's just to equalize the different frequencies and make sure certain frequencies don't stand out excessively, sort of make everything seem more natural. What happens, though, is sometimes in in different rooms, in different locations, different voices, you'll naturally have certain frequencies that stand out a little bit, and sometimes that can be problematic. Uh, Very commonly in uh, home studios, home recording booths, ones that you've uh, treated yourself or maybe haven't uh, treated as thoroughly as possible, uh, uh, they can sound boxy. Um, It it sounds like you're talking from within your shower. Uh, Sometimes it can sound a little muddy. Uh, sometimes it can sound echoey, although equalization really doesn't help that much with echoes. Uh, but there are certain frequencies that can stand out, and they can affect the clarity of your voice, and using an equalizer can help. So, let's get started. Let's see what equalizers are present in our DAW. Again, we're using Reaper, and it comes with a really, just a really good equalizer uh, that hopefully will be able to um, do some good to my voice with. Um, I don't do a lot. And luckily, we don't usually have to do a lot as voice artists. Uh, But I'll show you what to do. And I'll show you, uh, I'll give you the advice that I've learned over time. And we'll see if that helps. We are going to first add a uh, another effect to our chain. So we see that we already have the gate applied uh, from one of our other gate Uh, lesson that we use for managing breath and background noise. Uh, So now we're going to add the next item in our chain, and that's going to be the equalizer. So if we click add down here, uh, we search for pretty much all the Reaper ones. Start with RE, R-E-A. So you start for uh, R-E-A-E-Q, and you get the RE-E-Q VST, the plugin. And you get this uh, this pretty chart with four items in it, uh, one, two, three, four, and a nice flat line. That flat line, that that teal, blue, green, that line that's a, that's there um, is is a nice flat representation of all the frequencies and whether they're boosted or reduced, cut is what that's called. Uh, and right now it's flat; nothing is boosted or cut. There are different kinds of equalizers that uh, are are different kinds of uh, parameters that you can add to equalizers. Uh, And for our purposes, there's really only a couple that we need to worry about, but they have different names, frustratingly. Um, For us, we care about pass or shelf and band equalizers. A pass equalizer will say what frequencies are allowed to pass. It's almost like a like a filter. Uh, and so there are low pass, high pass, and then it's converse low shelf and high shelf. And it's, it's it, they're, they're frustrating, uh, frustratingly named. I can't help that. I didn't come up with the names. So let's talk first about that number one on there. That is the low shelf. And essentially it dictates Nothing below that designated frequency will be allowed through. For most human voices, there's a certain frequency below which there isn't a lot of information. It's really just noise. Um, It's just unwanted frequencies. And for most people, it's in the 70 to 80 hertz range. So anything below that in the bass, there might be some bass in that voice, but it can often be distracting. It can sound really boomy and boxy on headphones. It can make things rattle when you don't want it to rattle. And really, when you're talking with somebody, your voice doesn't make them vibrate, right? So you want to uh, you want to cut some of that lower frequency. Beginning voice artists say, man, I want that boom, and they'll want to start boosting bass frequencies. Oh, 
Never boost the bass frequencies. Everybody will see it. Everybody will figure it out. Don't do that. The low frequency, we're going to cut the low frequency, and you see we can just move it, and that frequency slider tells us what frequency we are cutting. And I typically set mine in around 70 to 75 hertz. And so everything below that is going to taper off. And the other great thing about that is not only does it take away some of the, the rumble in your voice that really isn't real information, but if outside your booth a truck goes by, that usually vibrates down at like 40 or 50 hertz, and you'll be able to take away the rumble of outside traffic. Sometimes you'll be able to cut out the rumble from your furnace if you have a furnace that's nearby. So taking away that lowest bass frequency, it's going to make it more pleasant for people to listen to. Depending on your microphone, you may also um, want to notch or take away some of the high frequency stuff. I usually don't do this much. My microphone is a, is a pretty good one, this uh, Sennheiser microphone. Um, so I usually don't mess around too much with, uh, with the high shelf, but you can roll off some of that high frequency. And usually uh, there's not much of our voice that's up over like 12 or 14 kilohertz. There's probably some harmonics up there if you're a singer, but for voice actors, there isn't a ton. So if you find that there's static or hiss or something, it's okay to roll off um, or use the high shelf and cut some of that higher frequencies and do it up above you know, 12 or 14,000 kilohertz. Maybe 12 might be on the lowest side that you'd want to go. The next two frequencies that we have here in the in the middle that come with REAQ, re um, and you can add more, you can take them away, but there are two band parameters, and those will boost a certain or boost or cut a certain frequency uh, within the range. So they'll 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 uh, affect a certain range in the middle, and it will taper off both on the high and low side. So you're affecting a certain range of frequencies within the entire spectrum. The, the way that I typically do it is you, you try and do as little as possible, and it should be subtle, and it should uh, not be heard. The thing that I start with is usually for uh, my voice is I usually end up needing to cut usually in the 250 to 300 hertz range. We'll listen to it and see if we can hear a difference. Uh, but I usually end up cutting just a little tiny bit. That's called uh, cutting a certain, certain frequency. And you see that I could just drag that number two around. And it says right now it looks like it's at 185 hertz. And we'll see, that, uh, we'll see how that does. The, the lowermost slider is the bandwidth. Uh, it says in octaves. You'll also sometimes see this referred to as the Q, and that is how wide that parameter, how wide a band that parameter affects. So it can be uh, very wide and smooth, or you can really notch out a very specific frequency. So if there's some, some frequency that's really um, irritating, you can notch that out. Uh, but I usually keep it as a, as a fairly wide Q, about a, an octave, octave and a half on either side of my, uh, uh, my affected frequency. And you can see I'm not notching, I'm not dipping it down too much. I'm not putting this, this low part right into it. I'm just notching it down a bit. Oh, I should say that um, what we're doing there with that number two, that you'll frequently call, hear that called demudding. And it's especially prevalent on, on men's lower voices. You'll want to demud it. Um, and by cutting a little bit of that, that mid bass frequency, you can actually add some clarity to your voice. The other one is you can, uh, you can overcome some of your room tone with this other band. I usually, on my microphone in my studio, I don't mess around with it too much. I don't think we'll listen to it and get any benefit out of it here. Sometimes you can also um, notch out if you, if you can identify uh, a frequency. If your room does sound boxy, you can sometimes help some of that boxiness by finding that frequency and adding a band and a very narrow cue, a very narrow bandwidth, and notching that out. So if we, let's say we had a, um, a problem frequency at three or 400 hertz, which might be about right for uh, a room this size. I don't know, not a mathematician. I don't really know. I'm making it up. But you can notch out these frequencies and reduce them, and that will help reduce some of that boominess. Won't get rid of it completely, but you can help it. Uh, but that's, those are the different types of parameters. And for a voice actor, that's probably all you should do 
um, I wouldn't mess around with your EQ curves much more than that. So let's turn it off and let's see what our bass sound sounds like, our uh, original sound sounds like. It was a hot summer's day and I was the driver on engine three on the east side of town. The backstep man was out sick, so they were sending a replacement from him. So on my voice, I, I do have some pretty good, this microphone, I love this microphone. I love it so much. Uh, we do have some, we, I love the, the, the high-end clarity on this microphone. Uh, it's crisp. Some people do think it's a little bright. So uh, my voice is reasonably deep, but if you have a higher voice, you may want to cut some of that high end. So let's reset our bands here and let's see what, what those things would do. Let's first... Um, mess around with the high shelf. If that sounds too bright for you, let's see how we could uh, reduce some of that. It was a hot summer's day, and I was the driver on Engine 3 on the east side of town. The backstep man was out sick, so they were sending a replacement from headquarters to fill in for the day. Two privates. Right, so you hear as we're shelving off that, that high frequency stuff, um, it gets, it just sounds more and more, more and more muffled, muted. Um, the nice thing about the EQ is... It was is a hot summer's day. You can see that yellow line that's showing you where the frequency information is. So if you watch... It was a hot summer's day, and I was the driver on Engine 3 on the east side of town. My voice, my voice barely gets up above 10K ever, and that's usually just in that the sibilant S sound. Um, so I could potentially cut all the way at like 10K, and that would get rid of any hiss or noise that's infiltrating from the outside. If there's any high whistles or anything like that, you'd be able to cut those, and it really wouldn't affect your voice at all. It was a hot summer's day, and I was the driver on engine three. I'm taking away nearly half the frequency spectrum, and really, there's not a ton noticeable uh, difference-wise. It was a hot summer's day, and I was the driver on engine three on the east side of... So the next thing we'll do is we'll cut the bass. Um, like I said, I usually cut around uh, 70, 75 hertz. It was a hot summer's day, and I was the and driver again, on engine three. On we the can east see side that it's town. rolling off some of the deepest, the, the deepest part of my voice, that chest resonance that uh, maybe isn't uh, as pleasant to listen to when you're listening to me on on headphones or you're listening to it in a car that have uh, you know subwoofers and, and big woofers. It'll make it really boomy, and it won't sound natural. It'll actually sound kind of bad, so you want to roll some of that stuff off. The next thing is that number two band, that first band, what I would use typically do for demudding. Uh, de it was a hot summer's day, and I was the driver on engine three on the east side. So what I hear, and this is pretty subtle, is somewhere in the, well, let's see. Let's look at the frequency and see. It was a hot summer's day. And I was the driver on engine three you on see the that east side first, of town. Um, that first bump that we have there, um, you'll see it right here at about 200 hertz. It was a hot summer's day, and I that, was the driver on engine first, three on the east side of that town. That first bump, that first bump that we get there, that often can sound um, boxy and unpleasant and muddy, and can make your voice lack a little bit of clarity. So if you take that bump away and smooth it out, it can actually make the voice sound a lot crisper. It was a hot summer's day, and I was the driver on Engine 3 on the east side of town. Hear how much more natural that sounds? I, it's subtle. It's subtle. You won't hear it uh, necessarily like over your laptop speakers. But if you're listening to it you know, on, on headphones or on studio monitors or if you've got, uh, you know, in-ear monitors, uh, it really does, it, it makes it sound crisper, and it's much less fatiguing to listen to in the long run. It was a hot summer's day. And I was the driver on engine three. And all we're doing is taking away that, that first little batch. And that's it. That's all I ever do for EQ. That's what my EQ curve looks like. The next person down the line, if I'm sending this off to somebody, they may mess around with it more. You want to mess around with it as little as possible before you send it off to the client because they may still yet want to do things. So don't mess around with it too much. But that is a pretty normal looking EQ curve. Uh, for what uh, mine is. And I, like I said, I don't roll off the high end on mine. So that's my EQ curve right there. I, pull, I roll off some bass and I demud a little bit in the 200 uh, hertz range or so uh, because that's where my voice has a, has a little bit of a boost that can get fatiguing to listen to. So that's it. That's how to EQ your voice for voiceover. Now, get in your booth and record something amazing.